Good morning and welcome to Fellowship Church Online. My name is Ross and if this is your first time checking out FC Online, we're so glad you're here. And if you're looking for more information about Fellowship or upcoming events, I wanna encourage you to check out our website at fellowshipchurchct.com. On the homepage there, you'll find an area where you can fill out a connection card. This is your go-to in getting connected to FC and when you fill out that card, you'll be able to receive email, updates and announcements so you're in the know about everything going on here at FC. There's also a place on the connection card to fill out any prayer requests that you may have. Our pastors and leaders would love to pray for you. Fill one out today. We would love to know that you were here. We'd like to thank all of you that are giving regularly to fellowship. Your giving allows us to continue our programs here at FC, as well as continue to be a blessing to others locally and around the world. Each Christmas season, we like to encourage everyone to consider giving their greatest gift this Christmas towards our Christmas offering. Our Christmas offering is a commitment to give above and beyond our regular giving. And when you give to this year's Christmas offering, you'll be giving towards the following projects. Number one is the support and the construction of a second Hope Center in San Jose, Costa Rica. The second is our Benevolence Fund, which helps those who are in need financially within our church community. Thirdly is our Children's Environment HVAC. Our units are nearly 25 years old and will soon need to be replaced. And finally, number four is debt reduction towards our mortgage here at Fellowship Church. You can find more details about our Christmas offering by going to our website. And if you'd like to give today, you can do so through our website or on our app or by texting Fellowship CT to the number 833-245-6507. Thank you so much for your generosity and continue praying about this year's Christmas offering. That's it for me. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of the service.
Well, I love this time of year, and I hope that you do too. And as we move into the Christmas season, I wanna ask you this question. What are you most excited about? Maybe it's the Christmas music. You just love hearing the carols throughout this, these next few weeks. Maybe it's the Christmas food, the traditions that you have. Maybe that you eat only once a year. Or of course, it could be the Christmas gatherings and the traditions, or how about those movies as well? Whatever it is, we wanna help you celebrate Christmas. I wanna invite you to our Christmas Eve services. We're gonna be meeting together on Christmas Eve. We're gonna be singing carols. There's gonna be candy and a special story for the kids. There's gonna be a meaningful Christmas message. And of course, at the end, we have this wonderful candlelight moment in our service. And it really sets us up for Christmas Day. So we're gonna be meeting together on site Friday, Christmas Eve at 3.30 and at five. We'd love for you to be here. We'd love to, for you to encourage your friends and your family to be here as well. Of course, we'll have a way for you to connect online with us as well on Christmas weekend. But people always find our time together super meaningful and it really sets the tone for Christmas Day. Well, last year was so much about social distancing, right? We took a reprieve from our traditions and gatherings. Many of us this Christmas though, we're kind of going the other way with things. We're getting ready for guests. We can't wait to have family with us and in our homes. And I don't know how you prepare, but maybe if it's out of town guests, you're probably getting the air mattresses all set and the extra bedding, or maybe you're decluttering and cleaning out that guest bedroom closet that just gets filled up during the year. Or maybe for you, you're switching your grocery shopping from Stop and Shop to Sam's Club, right? Or I know that all of us tend to rearrange our furniture when people come over and maybe even a few of our kids. Well, what we do know is that not everything goes as planned, right? So today we're starting this brand new series called Imperfect Christmas, because they kind of all are, right? And the first one was as well. And today I want to talk about one of the greatest logistical mistakes that happened at the first Christmas. The fact that there was no room for Joseph and Mary at the end. I mean, think about this. How could that happen, right? But I want us to back up and I want us to ask another question. What if the story isn't like you remembered or heard? What if there's something in a story that's different, that can actually change your life? So let's start by reading the beginning of the first Christmas. In Luke 2, it says this, In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each one to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and she laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Man, here's something fascinating that you may have heard the story of this innkeeper, whether you think he was greedy or whether you think he was kind. I mean, we all have our image of what he may have looked like or she may have looked like. But did you notice that there's no innkeeper mentioned? I mean, it's neat for the nativity story, but the innkeeper's not mentioned. See, I think today it's because of this. We think in, when we think of in, we think of hotel, right? But there were no hotels in Bethlehem. These were ancient days. So the word used for inn was more of a guest room in a regular house. Actually, many newer versions of the Bible actually use the word guest room. So it's a good reminder that the things that we think are in the Bible aren't actually in there. For instance, everything happens for a reason. Nope, not in there. God helps those who help themselves. Uh-uh. Time heals all wounds, not in the Bible. See, Joseph and Mary are headed to Bethlehem for a census. They're staying with family, and there's no room in the house. And so they're going to be staying in the stable, which probably most scholars believe was carved out of a cave, actually. So, you know, this was family. They probably didn't have a lot of extra resources. They were doing the best that they can. And it could be that Joseph may have really screwed this up. I mean, some of us, some people have said that this is the real reason that the first Christmas was a silent night. Well, you might ask, what does this have to do with me today? 
I mean, what is this fact of them having no room in the end? I'm dealing with an impending divorce, or I have a chronic illness, or I have family problems and it's really a lot of drama, or I'm feeling so much stress at my job right now, or I'm battling depression and anxiety. What if there's a lesson here though? What if every room of our life is full, just like that guest room was, and there's no room for Jesus? Think about it, especially this time of year. Our calendar is full, and our checkbooks are usually empty, right? <laughs> but we use phrases like, hey, you know, can we fit this in? Or do you need to move stuff around? Can we do that? We're always talking about trying to squeeze more in because things are already full. And the question I want to ask you is, when will you spend maybe 20 minutes in prayer during this season? When will you plan to go to church or to see us online? Which Christmas Eve service will you attend? And who will you intentionally invite and bring? See, if there's no room in your schedule for Jesus, maybe you can take a look at that and take some time to rearrange some of those priorities. I mean, let's walk through this a little bit. Is there any room in your home for him? I mean, is there any room in your marriage or in your parenting? I mean, so often when, our, when it comes to our marriage and parenting, we just go with our gut or we go with our past experience, whether it was good or bad when it comes to marriage and family. Yet some of those family cycles that we bring into our house, they just bring a lot of chaos with them, don't they? So what about biblical advice? What about even like, in our kids' environments, where we have these take-homes for your kids to bring home, and they're really largely for you as well as a parent, that you can read through, that you can have conversations with your children, that you can learn to even have build your skills to be a better parent, to follow biblical principles and ways. How about when we learn more about God and we learn more about His ways, we learn more about healthy boundaries and a supportive presence that we can be with homework with our kids, it, it, it would translate into that, or even helping our kids with college and career decisions, because wisdom really rules the day. It's so important for us. So is there any room for Jesus in your home? Secondly, I wanna ask you this, is there any room for him at your work? I mean, it's so easy to compartmentalize Jesus, right? To our quiet time or to the physical or digital campus. But life is so much more integrated than we think. Jesus, I want to share this story with you. He was teaching on the shore of a large body of water. And he asked the local fishermen if he could use their boat to teach from because, frankly, he was running out of real estate. The crowd was pushing in on him, and he was heading into the water. So he literally taught from these fishermen's boats. And Luke records this in chapter 5. He says, when he, Jesus, had finished speaking... He said to Simon, Simon is eventually going to be Peter, now go out where it's deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Now remember, Peter was a commercial fisherman. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and we didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time, their nets were so full of fish that they began to tear. And a shout for help brought their partners in on the other boat and soon, both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. And so what I want to ask you with this is what's in your boat? So your boat in this event would be anything you have that allows you to make a living. It's your career. It was Peter's and his friends' careers. That boat is what they used to make a living. So what is it in your life, in your career, that you need to invite Jesus into? Because when they did, he made all the difference. Think about it. Do you invite Jesus and his values into your job? Are you an example to your coworkers? Do you model kingdom values like loving God and others, or humility, or joy for others' achievements, or even simplicity and faith? I mean, do you pray for your coworkers, or your boss, or your employees? Christmas reminds us that Jesus isn't just an additive for your life. He's meant to transform your life, your whole life. So is Jesus your leader or are you telling him how to follow? Is he merely just a good luck charm or is he your Lord? Is there any room for him in your life? More than just in the emergencies. Are you inviting him to lead you through your calendar, through the Christmas season, through your relationships and even through your financial decisions? 
this Christmas season. See, there may not be an innkeeper in the original story. Whoever it was, they didn't just say, oh, there's no room. They redirected Mary and Joseph to where they could go, and they tried their best to make it work. What if you didn't just make room for Jesus in your life, but you also made room for Jesus for other people as well? I mean, you could actually use your phone to do this, right? We've done this before. You can call, you can text, you can email. These are all ways that you can connect with people around you. You could make an ask on any one of your social media accounts. You could also do this face-to-face -face with somebody over coffee or at your cleaners or your local gym, wherever you have relationships. See, people are longing to hear that they're simply loved, that they matter. There's so many hurting people out there. And Christmas reminds us that Jesus left heaven so that we could see firsthand how God loves us. And he'll do anything to have a relationship with us. See, your simple, intentional invite to one of our Christmas Eve services could honestly change a person's life. It's an opportunity for them to meaningfully encounter Jesus, to hear what Christmas is all about in a relevant, engaging, and wonderful way. So just close your eyes for a moment. Ponder this, think about this. What part of your life is Jesus consciously or maybe even subconsciously not allowed? You know, we talked about work and home, but maybe it's the computer. Maybe there's certain even text threads on your phone that you don't want Jesus involved in. And ask Jesus this simple question. What part of my life has there been that there's no room for you? Have you invited him into your inner world, your anxieties and fears, your worries and your feelings? I mean, so much of our lives are really lived on those shallow surfaces, right? Talking about sports and weather. But have you asked him to show you the truth and expose the lies that you've for so far too long believed. Lies like you're not enough. You're not smart enough, pretty enough, handsome enough, tall enough, whatever it is. So Jesus, you might pray, I want you in charge of my whole integrated life. Maybe you know someone who really needs some encouragement. I know a lot of people who do. Maybe you can pray, God, put somebody on my heart right now who I need to connect with, to invite, and to have a great conversation with. See, as everything begins picking up, think about these next few weeks and how you can make Christmas special, not just for you, but also for somebody else. I mean, we just kicked it off with joining with our community to feed hundreds and hundreds of families Thanksgiving dinner. And remember, Jesus came to you on the way to somebody else. So maybe you'll remember with me the phrase of that well-known Christmas carol, may every heart prepare him room. Invite him in. Allow him to forgive you of your sins. Humble yourself. Let him lead and direct your life. And you'll be so glad you did.